You've got it tuned to KEXP. We're listener-powered radio at 90.3 FM in Seattle and streaming worldwide at kexp.org. I'm Cheryl Waters. I'm here with our good friend, Jose Gonzalez, a new album. So exciting. Hi, Jose. Hi. Hi. Happy to be back. Oh, it's so great to see you. I love that you've visited the station so many times over many, many years. We have such a great history together and always anticipate your latest record. Oh, great. <laughs> The new record is called Local Valley, and Jose Gonzalez will share some music from that now here on KEXP. Layer upon layer Calmly sinks to the ground You thought we were sane But set a cape and crown Harbor from the wood The lonely song To his Prayer upon prayer The loose calls will change Without 
knowledge and doubt To be at peace with and without Uh, the Void, Horizons, and Lasso Win. And now a song called Schumme, which means dude in Swedish. Thank you. 
Jose Gonzalez live on KEXP. Oh, that sounds so great. I love that song. Thank you. Thank you. I love the whole album, Local Valley. So wonderful. Thank you for coming in and sharing some songs today. Thank you. I'm happy to be here again. I feel like last time you were here, three years ago, you had a little baby at home. And since I last saw you, you have another yeah. little one at home. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. So Mateo is... Uh, Seven months old now. So. I know I can tell I follow you on social media and you absolutely love being a parent and you're totally engaged in that. It's all an image. It's all an image. <laughs> <laughs> Behind the scenes they're yelling and they're pooping and stuff. They, they didn't sell that, tell that to me before I got kids. <laughs> well, I imagine that that has dramatically shifted how you make music or have time to make music. How do you carve out time now with two little ones running around to make music? Because as I recall, you need to spend quite a bit of uninterrupted time with yeah. a song to, to get to a place, especially to have a full record of music. Yeah, I, I am pretty slow and that's why I have these three year intervals between albums. And this time it took even longer. Um, but yeah, so um, I guess, I'm able to come up with ideas to song, for songs uh, when, when, uh, whenever I get the time to sit with a guitar. But to finish them, I, I need this continuous time. And so it wasn't until my daughter, Laura, started uh, kindergarten when I got time to uh, working on the songs. And, um, but yeah, with, with the, these uh, couple of years, I've understood that you have to, you have to work whenever you, you have <laughs> some time off. Uh, so, so now if I wake up at four in the morning, I just go up and make some coffee and get to work. <laughs> I was going to ask, is there anything um, like uninterrupted time in your life anymore? But I guess if you're getting up at 4 a.m. Yeah, exactly. And, and kindergarten, you can. Uh, so now I'm waiting until Matteo gets a bit older. So, yeah. are, are you one of those people who has hundreds of demos and when it becomes time to make a record, you have to cull through them all and figure out what fits on the record? Or do you spend, you know, just a lot of time working on a song until you get it just right? And then those are the songs that make the record. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the later <laughs> example. So, yeah, I, I got my... Um, I mean, I could come up with uh, with sketches whenever, but but once I'd chosen which sketches to to finish off to, to make a song, um, I stick to those. So so it's it's been a problem with my labels asking for B sides and extra songs, and uh, and I actually stopped doing B sides <laughs> with this album. I know a lot of your music gets used in film and television, and I understand that you're not really in the mindset to create a score or a song just for uh, something like that, for a visual thing that they just kind of have to go through your collection and if one of your songs fits what they need. Yeah, exactly. That's been my tactic. <laughs> Being this low, it's like, uh, it's been great to do the collaborations I've done, but, but they've taken time from my, my personal goals. So, so yeah, from a couple of years ago, I decided to yeah, I'll do my songs. If people want to use them, great. <laughs> well, you're lucky that they find a lot there. We're lucky, too, because it's wonderful to hear them. And, you know, I'm sure you get lots of people still knocking at your door um, because it fits so beautifully in that visual element. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm always surprised and, and, and happy that, that it works. And uh, the latest one was uh, Michael Jordan with the, the Massive Attack uh, song, Teardrop. Uh, so yeah, it's always always great when people find ways to use use the music. In addition to feeling so calmed by your music, I'm also inspired by the themes that you address in your songs. I mean, philosophy, theology, science, nature, the state of the world, the state of mankind. A lot of heady topics are sort of interwoven in there. And I'm wondering what sorts of ideas made it into Local Valley. Yeah, there, there's many, many ideas, and uh, maybe I can mention a couple of ones. Uh, in the song Lasso In that I just sang, um, I'm using the word um, checking the state your uh, disposable soma is in. <laughs> That's a term for our bodies. <laughs> so if you look at the genes I view, we're basically just vessels to, uh, to help the genes replicate. So basically our bodies are disposable. <laughs> so, so I like using um, 
both heady terms, but but have some sort of humor underneath. Um, and also, the next line is um, check with the state your meme machine is in, which would be the mind and the, this meme processor that we have in our heads. I think of that as being a very contemporary term, but it's actually quite an old term, meme. Yeah, it was uh, Richard Dawkins that came up with it, uh, understanding that when he was writing the book, uh, the, the, the Selfish Gene, uh, he knew, of course, that we also have these cultural units that get uh, copied and, and um, edited and remixed. Uh, so so he came, coined the, the term meme uh, from, from gene and also from... Uh, memory and uh, mimicry, so, so yeah. But people, of course, uh, think about cats. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always thinking about cats, actually. <laughs> yeah. You have kids, I have cats. Yeah. I, I mean, one of the things I love about your music is when I hear you talk about the songs, it often launches me off into doing some research and investigation on something that you've piqued an interest in, and then I really learn something cool. new. <laughs> and so, I mean, you're, you're definitely well-versed in a lot of interesting things. There's a lot going on in that head of yours, Jose. <laughs> well, it's, it's been fun. It's, I think it started with the second album back in 2007, where I felt like I wanted to, in a way, make, make uh, interesting conversations. So, so since then, I've been sort of name-dropping. It's not so much about writing a, an article. <laughs> it's still music, so it's uh, very fragmental and... and so, um, but yeah, it's it's fun to just add some words here and there, and and some ideas that I, of course, didn't come up with myself, but found in different books. So. And very subtle and nuanced about it with this beautiful music. Oh, thank you. <laughs> You return to your own songs for reference a lot, which is kind of cool in a way, kind of covering yourself. You reimagined Honey Honey and Line of Fire, a Junip song on Local Valley. Talk a little bit about sort of covering yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, those... Um, uh, I used to make uh, all the covers. I'm, I'm used with... Uh, I'm known with the, the, the knives, heartbeats. and mm -hmm. but, but once in a while, I decided to cover my own songs and of course uh, there's a junior version of Line of Fire um, but, but uh, it felt right to do a, a stripped down version that I've been playing live quite a lot so that, that was fun to put on the album and Honey Honey was a collaboration with uh, DJ Kotze the German DJ and um, artist and um, that felt also like his version was great but I also felt like that could be a summary uh, summary song and, and also giving this uh, album a bit of a variation that I felt was needed. So um, talking about headiness, I felt like Honey Honey gives a bit of sensuality that I think often lacks <laughs> in, in the lyrics in my albums. You've also written songs in both Spanish and Swedish on this record, which is a first for you with a pretty big catalog behind you. And I know you started writing in English when you were young, so that kind of became your default. But I found it curious to know that you'd actually tried writing in Spanish before and just felt like you hit a wall. And I don't know if you just got lazy, it was easier <laughs> and just, yeah. you know, switched to English. But why now? What, what shifted you to writing not only in Spanish, but mm. in Swedish, which, of course, you grew up there? Yeah, it felt um, uh, it felt more important in a way. I asked myself who I wanted to be as an artist, and um, and uh, yeah, I decided I'm I'm not gonna be the the guy who only sings in English. Uh, so I put the effort, and this time I didn't get lazy as the last time, <laughs> <laughs> and I just wrote the yeah, El Invento and this song Shuma, uh, Lila Goman. Uh, yeah, so so I'm happy that finally I'm, I've, uh, I have songs in my native tongues to present. And it must feel great that they've been so well received. Yeah, especially El Invento, I feel, has been really, really fun to put out there. And, um, and it, it, yeah, it's one of my favorites. In performing these songs in this chosen language, do you feel a different connection to them? Uh, yeah, I do. I mean, uh, I remember... Uh, finishing the, the song El Invento and feeling like I uh, I was uh, channeling my my influences from Latin America and, and especially Silvio Rodriguez um, and uh, yeah just being my my the, the tongue the the language that I talked when when I was a young kid I, 
uh, there were some uh, nostalgic <laughs> emotions bubbling up. <laughs> Speaking of nostalgia, I feel a sense of nostalgia listening to your music because I recall older albums, you know, when I listen to the new ones, and you often incorporate incorporate elements of nature in your music. And I've always felt that thread, whether it was intentional or not, but you've actually literally used bird sounds in a number of songs on this record. In addition to being very calming, it sort of transports us to that place where you were making the record. Can you talk about incorporating those sounds? Yeah. Um, so yeah, with this album, uh, we, I decided to switch from a regular studio or my apartment to um, to the countryside, so so that's where I wrote and record the songs. And many times uh, I could hear the birds singing outdoors, and and uh, yeah, I decided to record them and, and try them on. Uh, at first, I tried them on every song, but it was uh, it was too much, <laughs> so I ended up using them on on uh, three songs. And and yeah, it has this um, they have this calming effect. I feel. Uh, not only the bird songs, but also the ambient uh, uh, hiss. Um, and I guess, uh, yeah, the bird songs, uh, they signal to you that there might not be any predators around, so they <laughs> they're not screaming, they're just like chirping quietly, uh, or, or still, yeah. But um, yeah, so that was a fun thing to, to do with this album, since I feel like uh, nature is uh, such a big part of who we are, and, and uh, it's, uh, I guess, one of the themes of our times to uh, try to reconnect with nature now that we have this modern way of life. I feel very connected with nature, and bird sounds is one of the things that really brings me a lot of joy. It's a simple joy, but it's a pretty big one for me. And, you know, birds often um, make a lot of noise in the early morning and in the evening. And I find myself just stopping and kind of holding my breath. And if I'm out for a walk and I hear, you know, the sounds of birds, I'll mm. often just stop and close my eyes and listen. I mean, it's a really powerful, simple thing. I love that you had the initial desire to just put it on every song. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I realize that I'm getting older, like enjoying birds and, and trees and... <laughs> Uh, and not going to shows that much. <laughs> well, uh, you have a beautiful artwork, a cover for this record, Local Valley, and I know that you worked with your partner yeah. on that, who also sings on one of the songs on this record as well, and one written maybe about her or yeah, in her honor. Uh, yeah, with her. So Hannah Lefanstrom, uh, we've been together for 10 years, and uh, yeah, she made... Uh, we talked about doing this new album cover and... and uh, we were both like, we should use more colors. <laughs> it's not only gray or beige, but uh, all kinds of colors. And inspired by Joseph Frank, a Swedish textile designer. Um, and yeah, the, the song Swing was really fun to, to uh, both write. At first I wrote it in Swedish, and uh, she was like, yeah, this is too corny, it's not good. <laughs> and the label was also like, yeah, maybe you can keep on writing now that we have the pandemic you have lots of time <laughs> and I was like no I like this song and uh, so basically I just uh, rewrote the lyrics uh, instead of Swedish to, to English and, and it came out better uh, she helped me out to, to write a couple of lines are uh, you able to perform that one live yet I know you were working on that yeah I, yeah now I've been performing it uh, with, with the loops and all the stuff yeah well, an evening with Jose Gonzalez is truly something magical, and I know it must be hard to be away from the family, but how does it feel to be out touring again? Well, it feels great. It's, um, um, I mean, it, it is such an amazing thing to, to connect with audiences and, and just be around and hugging my, my dudes <laughs> that I tour with. <laughs> What's that? What's that word again? Jome? Shuma. Shuma. Yeah, Your dudes, is that what that means? Uh, yeah, it's Gothenburg slang for dude. Okay. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm really happy that we're on, on this side of the pandemic where it's, uh, we're getting there to... Uh, slowly we're going to normality and I think music has been really sad to, to not, not be able to sing together. So, so yeah, I'm really happy to, to be out again. Well, we're so happy to see you in person. We appreciate you doing a live at home session for us during the yeah. pandemic times. And we were so happy to continue to be able to share live music from artists then. But of course, nothing like being in the room mm. with someone that you love whose music they're sharing so generously with you. And I just look back at all the years and all the performances you've done with us. I think 
The first time we had you in studio was with Juno back in 2010. Yeah, yeah, I just ran past the, the old studio. <laughs> Such a wonderful. Well, you look beautiful in this new studio and the new record. So gorgeous and always so wonderful to see you. Thank you so much for coming by. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much for tuning in to KEXP. It's Jose Gonzalez. And I want to thank all of our wonderful listeners who are donors supporting KEXP, making all of these wonderful sessions possible. You can find us at kexp.org. And check out our YouTube channel where you'll find so many videos like this one to enjoy. You can subscribe as well. Thank you so much for joining us here. It's KEXP Seattle. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.